in the quantum health world, we say that you want to redox before you detox. But what I've learned as a clinician over the course of the past two decades is that you want to work on redox, which I'm going to talk about in this video, along with opening drainage pathways in order to support the body's natural detoxification. Um, the typical paradigm is that when you just push detoxification, there's a couple of things that can quote unquote go wrong for the client. Number one, they can have what's called a Herx reaction, which yes, there potentially are some symptoms that may express themselves when the body is clearing toxins. However, I find that when clients get a Herxing reaction, it's because they either have a lack of redox, which I, again, I'm going to talk about in a second, and or they don't have open drainage pathways. And if we focus on building redox at the same time as we open drainage pathways, the body naturally has enough energy in which that it can use to, to clear toxins and support detoxification. And at the same time, the drainage pathways are open so that the toxins have a pathway through which that they can be eliminated without causing damage or ex uh, symptom expressions in people. And so here's just one particular slide from the actual module, practitioner module that I teach on this exact topic, redox, drainage, and detoxification. So looking at this slide, looking at this slide, this is, a, this is kind of an interesting that I want, I want to orient you to. So first thing you see in the middle is an animal cell. Uh, and so that cell is a very simplified view of the cell. And so basically you see that it's full of water, mitochondria are in there. And yes, there is also a nucleus. Um, but what, what you don't realize is the importance of this water. The intracellular water is entirely forgotten about when it comes to understanding how a cell can literally exclude toxins or prevent toxins from getting it, toxins from getting in in the first place to wreak havoc, create cellular dysfunction, mitochondrial dysfunction, DNA damage, all those things. And so remember, I talk extensively about this thing called easy water, but a lot of people don't realize that the easy stands for exclusion zone water. And even more people don't realize what that actually means. And so I want people to realize that when, when we're talking about this thing called exclusion zone water, and that is the majority of the water inside of our cells is exclusion zone water, it's called exclusion zone because literally the way that it structures and organizes itself pushes things away from it. So you've got all these biological surfaces inside of the cell. You've got the membranes, the mitochondria, the cytoskeleton, the nucleus, the other organelles, the proteins, the molecules. All of these are hydrophilic surfaces. And all of these hydrophilic surfaces are surrounded by exclusion zone water. So frankly, the vast majority of intracellular water is in this exclusion zone water form. And this exclusion zone water structures itself in a way that pushes things away from the biological hydrophilic surfaces. So that's why Dr. Pollock called it an exclusion zone in the first place, because he noticed that this, this type of water that forms next to these hydrophilic surfaces doesn't allow things to penetrate it. It won't allow anything but electrons, and photons essentially and vibrational information to penetrate it or to interact with it. And so in my clinical experience, people who have a lot of toxicity in their body and a lot of intracellular toxicity are people who have had an inadequate amount of exclusion zone water for quite some time. Because if they don't have adequate exclusion zone water or maintain adequate exclusion zone water inside of their cells, that means their water no longer is in this exclusion zone phase. And instead, the, the vast majority of the intracellular water is more bulk water, very much more so like fluid water. And things can dissolve in and out of fluid water and start to wreak havoc, like I said, causing things like mitochondrial dysfunction. And so one of the things that's not taken into consideration th through this concept of detoxification is the fact that one of the ways that a cell can actually detoxify and push out toxins is through maintaining adequate exclusion zone water. We call that in, again, quantum biology, we call that redox or building your redox, your redox potential. And the presentation that this slide is from goes into so much beautiful detail about what that means and how that happens. But really, if we can build this exclusion zone water, not only are we giving cells a source of energy which, with which they can then work to support healing the intracellular structures that are damaged, but also then we build this exclusion zone force field, this barrier that essentially doesn't allow toxins to get into the cell in the first place. And it pushes out the toxins that are lodged in the intracellular space and need to get cleared for this cell in this tissue to truly heal.
And so as the cell then pushes the toxins out, those toxins, as exclusions on water builds, those toxins go into this interstitial space, which is the images that I, I, I talk about more extensively again in the, in the lecture. But the images you see at the bottom here are what happens basically in the space surrounding the cells. There's this gap between the capillary that delivers fluid and nutrients and oxygen to the cell. And then also the lymphatic vessels, which is where the cells uh, waste products and toxins drain out of. And so then you, in this interstitial fluid, you have a lot of immune cells and things like that that help with the processing of what is being eliminated from the cell. And so if I have a client who has a, cl a clogged lymphatic system, then as they build exclusions on water, they're going to get symptoms such as the Herxing symptoms like I talked about. So a prime example of this is clients who cannot sweat, or if they do sweat, like such as a sauna use, it starts to make them feel worse. Prime example to me that they haven't had adequate exclusions on water in the first place, and a prime example to, uh, to me that as they build exclusions on water and push the, the cell, the, the toxins out of the cell and into the lymphatic system, into the interstitial space, that there's uh, poor lymphatic flow and lymphatic drainage. So that's what this whole entire practitioner module centers around. It's this idea that we, yes, we absolutely need to build redox for energy for the cells to heal and also to essentially prevent toxins from lodging in there in the first place and exclude the ones that are already in there. So we have to build redox, but if we build, build redox and we don't have open drainage pathways, that can be a problem. But if we build redox and support drainage pathways at the same time, I hope you can now see how that can lead to natural detoxification simply because now the lymphatic system has the ability um, and the capabilities to process those toxins and clear them uh, in, in ways that are not going to create uh, damage to the host or damage to the cell or uh, essentially make the person sicker. So again, such fun things to talk about and a very different way to view supporting health that has just brought so much profound appreciation in my clinical practice for helping people understand and apply these concepts. It by far is the foundation upon which I lay all my other uh, practices on it. This idea of uh, quantum health and quantum biology, it's something that I'm really passionate about teaching. Um, and so I'm excited to continue to share more of this information with you.